um, when I when I did my my last recording, um, it was full of me losing my train of thought and clicking the wrong thing and somebody coming in to tell me what went wrong. It's you know very informal. I don't have a train of thought, so that'll make this easier. Um, more of a caboose. <laughs> grab some water. Okay, done. All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome. Uh, it's April 23rd, 2023. Um, this is the nocturnal flight call groups, informal spring chats talking about how to use Vesper and download it and stuff. Uh, my plan today is go through my recordings from last night and take a look at them. And I'm going to do that the process that I use. Whether or not it works for everyone is up to you. If you, anyone has any questions, you can always contact me. My name is Richard Littauer, L-I-T-T-A-U-E-R. Uh, that's richard.litower at gmail.com, birdingvermont.com, any of those. Um, I'm a podcast host professionally as part of my job, which is why I immediately switched into a deeper voice. If it annoys anyone, just let me know. I'm sorry. Um, but with that having been said, I got my files off my computer. So I use two computers to do this work. I have a basically like a small NUC like thing. I used to use a NUC, but then I upgraded to a better one because I just wanted more RAM and stuff. And it's permanently attached to my night mic. I only use this for this. Um, on a rare moon, I'll play Age of Empires because it's my only Windows box. And it's recording all night using iSound Player. Um, I have a recording right now from, I believe, 8.30 p.m. until 4 a.m., which gets the nautical twilight in the evening when I'm likely to have it on, but doesn't bother in the morning because I don't care about robins. Um, but in the evening, sometimes the birds are flying earlier than astronomical twilight. And I want to catch those birds. Um, I have a complicated situation where I live in an urban environment, which means that I'm also catching everyone walking by my house. So that's not great, but uh, that's when I generally record. Uh, right now on April 23rd, I believe Nocturnal Twilight starts somewhere around 930 um, where I am, which is Montpelier, Vermont. Um, I record it all remotely. It's saved automatically using a naming scheme that I set up in iSound Player. I won't tell you how to do that today because I don't have Zoom up on that computer, but it's relatively easy to do, I hope. It took me a while to realize that you don't have to follow the naming scheme that Harold Mills uses in Vesper. You can use your own sort of naming scheme, and I'll show you that when I import my recording. But I've taken those files and I put them onto a hard drive, and now I'm talking to you from my souped-up MacBook Pro, which I just find to be much faster and much more able to actually live with me and like be the thing I want to be on. As opposed to a Windows box where I don't know how to do anything because I'm not a Windows developer anymore. Um, with that having said, I'm going to share my screen and show my entire process um, sans one or two things. Um, any questions at this point, Angela or Joe? No questions from me. I'd say, you know, for the sake of the recording, let's just roll and see, see your style and cool. um, yeah. Towards towards the end, I think Angela and I might, you know, start trying to import a recording and you might troubleshoot a little bit, but let's just save that for the for the QA. Maybe first you just go through our your normal style. Okay. And feel free, but feel free to ask questions because that'll actually inform what how I how I talk about. It. I'm trying to talk to a general audience, but a general audience doesn't know what nocturnal flight calls are. So yeah, right. <laughs> let me exactly. know what you need to know. A general audience of people who want Vesper. <laughs> yeah. yeah, this will be cool. a, yeah, treat, treat this like a dummies for Vesper tutorial. Excellent, all right. Or Vesper, sorry, Vesper for dummies. I'm gonna share my screen now. I'm gonna share my whole screen. Hopefully that works. Can you see my screen? Excellent. Yeah. So That's let's good. clear this out. Clear, LS, I'm in a scripts. I want this to go away. Um, folder in my computer. Uh, it's in my coding area, which is SRC. Those are all my coding things, way too many. So clear. Why do I have a scripts folder? Why didn't I just go straight to Vesper or something? Well, good question. This is terminal. And I have this little file. These are just my random little things that I have. And I have this random file here called Vesper open. It's a shell file. Um, to show you the coloration, here it is on an actual thing. And why do I have this? Because I hate writing these commands. 
Um, I forget how to do them, and it takes me five seconds. And I find with nocturnal flight calls that the major barrier is not technical know-how, it's time. It's always time. So as the smaller I can make, the amount of time it takes me to go through a recording, the better off I am in life. So straight off, I have um, a variable here that tells me uh, where the recordings are that are going to be relevant for this thing. If I'm traveling and I'm using my knock internal like flight call uh, audio moth, I change this. But in general, this is where I'm recording stuff right now. Blanchard Park is my home park. It's right next to my house in Montpelier. And I have little notes to myself that kind of help. Um, so what I do first is I CD, I change directory into that folder. And then I activate Vesper. I used to rename stuff. I don't do that anymore because it generally works. That's mainly for knock mix stuff. But here, I activate Vesper immediately. Um, there's another thing that I would like to do manually or automatically, which is this, which is activate BirdVox Detect. I don't know how to have two Conda instances going in the same terminal window. So I'm actually going to add a note to myself. And you'll notice that this is coding on the fly. Why is that? Because I change this all the time. This is not perfect. It's just a little thing that helps me out. And every time I have a little change, it gets better. That's how I tend to code. Um, I could over-engineer all this stuff, but because this is mainly scripts janked together like haywire on a sailboat, um, I'm just trying to get a bit better every time. So that's going to help me remember that. So that's cool. So let's get, go here. So I'm in here, and I can actually run Vesper open sh. And it automatically opened this. Why does it open this? Because I have it running in a weird way to open that first. Because I couldn't figure out how to open it after running run server because run server doesn't have a, an end thing. So instead, I just open up the file and then I wait a bit and I alt tab until I see this. I can also press command and then click here. But there I am. I, normally, I just refresh. Here's where it opened. I refresh. One thing I'm going to do, going to do here is going to press command tab, open a new tab. And this will be in the same directory. Shouldn't be, oh, it is scripts. Well, shoot. And that's going to be a local thing. Okay, so I have to CD, volumes, Abaya, Blanchard Park, 2023. I don't want to be in recordings. I just want to be there. And then I'm going to do conda, activate, back. I'm going to reverse search, bird box detect. Right, so now that's running. And I need to have that running on another window because otherwise bird box won't work which is just something I'd like to do. So Birdbox is now running. Vesper is running. Um, it's going to be running in its own Conda environment. It automatically sets that up. Again, if we look at the script, Conda's been activated. I'm using 4.13, which I think is Edge right now. Um, we can check that really quick by going here and looking at the tags on the side. Uh, looks like 4.12 is latest, so I'm using better than latest. I'm using the newer one that he hasn't pushed yet. Uh, we should ask him to fix that. So again, going off the let's just fix stuff. He, he said it was going to come close to the end of this month, I think. But I'm already using it. So shouldn't he have just push the tag? I don't know. Are you a special, are you a special super user? <laughs> uh, maybe. Uh, I might be, actually. I might already be using it. So let's just ignore that. Okay, I'm not going to open a new issue for Harold. He's fine. So here I have this month, or this year. You'll notice I only have this year here. I've been recording here for multiple years. I find it's actually useful not to have every single year there because I'm just never going to look at those things right now. Um, if I wanted to do that, I could do somewhere else. But the actual reason, the real reason, is that I ran out of space in my hard drive. And I have an entire hard drive filled with... Blanchard Park recordings, and that's just over there. It's filled, and now it's dead to me. So this is this year, which is cool. You'll see I've already imported and got some stuff going on this night. I'm going to import recordings for tonight. Balls. Oh. Did I use a capital? Yes. Okay. So here's how I import recordings. Now, you'll see it's already using this folder, which should be automatic. I'm just going to check something real quick. Cool. They're all here. Now you'll see with the naming scheme, you do need to have the timestamp that way. And you could also add, I could add EST 
it actually doesn't need to have EST in the file name. EST is the time zone because I have that in the metadata for my Vesper instance. So it knows that it's EST. So that's fine. This works. For years, I did not know how to do this. And I was doing everything in GMT and it was really painful. Highly suggest not going down that road. Spend the extra time, figure out how to have an EST. Another thing is Blanchard Park is the name of the recording station. So let's check that out. In fact, let's, I don't really know how to use Sublime very well. Let's use VS Code, which sucks. I miss Adam. All right. Here we have all of my recordings. Oh, that's not what I wanted. Here we have all of my recordings and we have my metadata YAML. Uh, here's my YAML file. It's great. Um, first off, Blanchard Park, time zone, US Eastern. That is very useful. Cannot be overstated. Makes it easy. I have a lot okay, of Okay. Okay. We uh me and Angela, we are going to we're gonna open up our our uh we're gonna open ours right now. This this is worth derailing because it sounds it cool. sounds like I, I've I've wrestled a bit. So I'm 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 in my Chrome Rhine archive, I'm in metadata, YAML, yep. I'm opening <laughs> one station dot y a m l and I'm going Time zone U.S. Eastern. It it was in the default. Yeah. Great, great. Cool. Make sure it's that way. It may have been changed recently. It wasn't that way originally. This is really useful. Yeah. Cool, cool. Yes. Okay. So we're. I think. I think anybody who's following the recent the recent path has it. So that's good news. Should be fine. Yeah. Uh, that's cool. Um. I have the start time set for April and the end time set for December. That's useful because otherwise it won't get anything or it won't import or classify things appropriately. So that's important in station devices. I have all the detectors I'm using here. Here are the five detectors I'm using at the moment. Oh, by five. the way, is there is there anything bad about setting the date range like crazy wide from like no. back? back? It so. doesn't matter. Don't hey, wait, wait, so. wait. Stop at your detectors again. Yeah, these are my detectors. Birdvox, MPG, and old old bird. Okay, so you've got the old bird. Okay, so I don't even have Birdvox um installed because I think Joe, you you told us to skip over it for now because an, an update was going out this month or something. Yeah, I was waiting for the new version before we would do that. I think I have the new version. I think I've yeah, been think following Edge. Uh, so what I've been doing is downloading Harold's Git repo and not using the install process that he suggests, but going directly off the most recent commits. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna wait to update. I think until yes. he he has the public rollout. Yeah, just yeah, don't 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 look at me too closely. I guess I'm sorry. I didn't okay. realize I was doing that. I just be, yeah, yeah. No, no worries. So like so. So for me, I just set this up last week or, oh. or actually more accurately a couple of days ago. So I don't have any detectors installed, correct, Joe? You should have um, these four. Yeah, MPG and Old Bird come, come standard. MPG and Old Bird. Okay, so even though the manual downloads of those programs didn't work for me? This, yes, it's not, this it's implementation is different from those. Okay, those. Yep. okay. okay thank you. Yep. Um, you'll notice here, I change this sometimes, my call classifications. I change it because I know what birds I want to look at, and I tend to delete things and do my own things. For instance, I have Song Sparrow, um, whatever, SP Swamp. Spotted Sandpiper, Solitary Sandpiper. Thank you. And then, yeah, Swamp Sparrow, Lincoln Sparrow. I know those are always the same. I also probably have the fun one in here. Oh, no, I don't. Okay, well, where is that? Don't need the logs. Archive data. This may be the actual archive data I'm actually using as opposed to that other one. Uh, I have them copied. That's kind of a mistake. Um, somewhere in here, I have great cheek thrust, but I guess I'm not seeing it today. That's annoying. Well, let's get great that. Cheek I, I, I can't, by the way, I just can't stop saying this. I cannot, I cannot get over... Pygmy nuthatch slash long billed dowager. That that just gives me feelings every time I see it. I'm looking at these defaults. These defaults aren't relevant. Okay, we're good. So, doop, doop, doop. 
let's close. Wow, too much. All right, let's close that out. We're good. I don't know what I changed, but I don't want to change anything. All right, close that, close that. Back here, let's import some recordings. Oh, that's already completed. Great. So I just imported 14 new recordings, which is great. And now I'm going to go to view, clip calendar, and you can see new recordings here. This day it rained. Didn't record anything that day. Uh, actually, last night it pretty much rained. I'm going to record the last two nights. So we're going to go now to process. Uh, by the way, one thing that's going to happen sometimes is you're going to get a unique constraint failed. You can go to admin to fix that. Make sure you back up your archive if you don't know what you're doing. Literally back up the, 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 the file in here called database because you don't want to mess that up. But say you have like multiple devices that you don't need or multiple station names, you can go in here and you can delete them and change them. Um, Harold doesn't talk about this directly. And I think there's a reason for that. But it also means that he has to do a lot of user testing with people like me who are like, everything's broke. Um, this is how you fix unique constraints. It's because you imported too many YAML things and you you can't change it later. So that's something that you should know. And I don't think it's documented very well at the moment. And I should probably help with that instead of saying that. I'm sorry, Harold, if you're watching this. I really respect your work. And my, your work. My, my, my instinct would be to, to delete everything and, and re, reinstall from scratch it, but... <laughs> that also is a good good thing, unless you've recorded a lot of stuff. Okay, so let's go process. You can't classify before you detect. Detect. I tend to do this. I click on bird box. Uh, what did I say I wanted to do? April 21. Let's just do 20. And I'm going to go till 12.31, because why not? Actually, let's not do that. That's stupid. I'll just make a lot of noise. So I'm going to go to the 30th, which is in the future. I don't use this schedule presets. I don't defer. And I click detect. And then I click back. And then I clicked here. And I click detect. And then I click back. Then I clicked here. Then I click detect. And then I click back. Then I clicked here. Then I click detect. Then I click back. And then I click here. Then I click detect. Then I click back. I haven't tried to do this before. And I just realized that's probably something I could do. So that's fun. Now in the future, I'm gonna just click all this. Great, anyway, if I go here, they're all running. So quick question, um, pros, are there any pros and cons of running them all versus just running one? Like does it double detect or, the same sound or what? No, it doesn't because it's a different detector. Um, this just detects various things that might be bird calls in the sound. It doesn't classify them at all. It just says it's probably it might be a bird thing. And there's no reason not to do them all at once, except your computer may be slow, which gets it takes more time. Birdbox in particular takes a lot of time. Um, as far as I know, there's no issues with accessing the database at the same time. And this is how I've been doing it for years. Uh, I've never once thought to just select them all, which makes me feel stupid. But that's why I do this. And thank you for helping me rubber duck my process. Excellent. So these are all running. You can tell they're running. Uh, it ran a detector already, so it's already doing some stuff. So let's go through. And I don't want to start running the classifier until I've detected everything. So this may take a bit, but that's OK. While we're doing that, I can go through and show you what this looks like. So this is the seep detector. Um, this is the ninth. And we can see here that I've already gone through. Oh, I haven't gone through. Cool. Call, 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 call. This is not a call. So what I do first when I'm going through and processing Vesper is I go through and figure out what's a call, what's not a call. So this one's obviously noise. So I'm going to press noise. I press N. This is not a bird noise. Even if that is a call, it's not clear to me. It looks like almost a black and white warbler or something, but no, noise, noise. Could be a call. Don't know what it is. Could be a call, but noise. And then you can press next by pressing shift period. This is what um, the old bird and it's like NFC mic automatically makes. So I press noise, I press next. That looks like a purple finch. 
Noise, purple finch, purple finch. Probably noise, noise. So this is a rather tedious task, which is kind of fun because you just get to get a good overview of what, what was going on and what the timing was uh, last night. So now and then I refresh and you can see the clips went down, right? There's less. Oh, that's also a noise. Can we, can we refresh, man? Oh, okay. So this is why you don't run them all at once. It just takes a while and then the computer gets slow. But that's cool. Cool, yeah, so now it's 33, not 46. So this is great. So then I go through and I change the presets. And I change it to Eastern Calls, which is what I'm using today. Um, just gonna check something really quick. Mm, okay, that's where it is. So I did something silly a while ago. I think it was me who did this first. Um, I got really annoyed at not having some birds in the call thing. Um, so I went through. Not this one. Which one is it? Yeah, I went through this and I added every single banding code with an equal sign because it's <laughs> I, trivial. I started that same process. Yeah. Well, now I think he actually, I think Harold just put it into the process. So now it's great. So you can put in zone tail hawk if you want. Excellent. Um, I always thought this one was really cool. Banding code of only two because it's two. I think that one's also dead. But anyway, here we go. So they're all in there. And I often go through and change these. This is what I was looking for earlier. This is one I use a lot, or I like to use a lot because it's cool. Yeah. Everyone wants a great cheek thrush. Uh, well, Bicknell sometimes for other people, but I live in Vermont. I get those by foot. But I go through and I change these, and this allows me to have better say on what's going on. Now, I also have this other stuff going on with Passerine Spa and Peep Spa. Peep is like a shorb. A sparrow is a sparrow. You all know what that is. I add those every now and then. And sometimes I, I move these around. And one thing I do a lot is I forget. I forget what I'm doing. And so what I do then is I go to my shortcut. I have a control op T automatically opens terminal for me. So I don't have to press alt tab terminal. I'll just get to the terminal. And I do this. You see, I pressed ag earlier because I want to see the Eastern thing. Let's say I wanted to fly lap and longs for. Bam, it tells me right there, there isn't a, a thing for it. I press equal Lalo. So I do this a lot have a terminal window open to search faster. Um, you could also have a call VS code editor up or something to search faster. But for me, it's just important. Now, why is this cool? Because it's good to go through here and be like, okay, all right, just making sure I double set the preset. Yep, on Eastern calls. This looks like something I don't know. Might be a sparrow, could be a warbler. I wouldn't be surprised. I'm not gonna do anything with that. Uh, no, it is a passerine. I could tell it's a passerine because it's at 6,100 to 7,500. There's just no way that's not a passerine bird. Um, so what I'm going to go through first is just check this because I haven't done this in a couple of days. Oh, P, passerine. Um, Joe, what do you think this is? You think it's a white-throated sparrow because of the jiggle at the end, or is it a song sparrow? I, I think I think white-throated would be my first guess. If the jiggles were stronger, I'd be a hundred percent. But if there there seems to be, a, I, I think there's a jiggle in there. I think I think white-throated is good. I think there is too. So let's just do that real quick uh x that's what i thought big x this one i don't know what this is passerine s <laughs> i think it's a sparrow you think it's a sparrow s yeah no not savannah not scarlet tanager oh my god it was in it was in your shirt really i saw it i saw it too it was in okay. it was in the short letters. It okay. was in the single single letters. Yeah, this looks like a sav. Seems long. Yeah. I don't know what that is. Sparrow though. Sparrow, sparrow unknown to me. J Sparrow. Sparrow. Uh could be a finch. Passerine. Sparrow. Song. Going Maybe, up. Maybe, but I don't know how to get rid of fox out of song. So I, no, I call that's them fair all point. sparrow. That's fair point. Uh these are all. Sparrow, sparrow, sparrows. Yeah. Uh, this one. Junko, this Junko, one Junko. Did you? 
Yeah, I agree, Junko. Do you think Junko? Yeah, I mean, I'm not sure. I'm not, I haven't been using the Vesper interface, so I'm not 100% familiar. Oh, can, do you have it set up so that your Zoom will share sound? Can you play them? Oh yeah, I can do that. Um, I never play calls. Um, and the reason is that I have the hearing of a 75 year old. I cannot hear nocturnal flight calls the vast majority of the time. Um, I've heard swings and thrushes by ear once, but hearing these things doesn't help me diagnose it at all. Okay. Okay. Don't worry about it now. It doesn't matter. No, I could, I could, I could do that. I have to stop the chair and restart it. Um, share screen, share sound. Yeah. That's just a weird thing about me. I wish it wasn't that way. I wish I wasn't colorblind. That's just how things are. What do you nah, think? It's too short of a cut. I can't hear it very well either. Okay. We can change the cut size. Um, I generally don't. Yeah. It's so short of a call anyway. I, I think it's, it's fine for Jungo, but I'm not sure. I don't know. Okay. Uh, purple pinch is a lot higher. I think that's the only one that's like that. I'm going to also say it's Junko. Uh, Eastern calls look like it's a capital J, not a lowercase J. The fact that they came in a series is kind of encouraging. Yeah. What's this thing? I mean, it's most likely song, but I can't, or, or I mean, it could be white throated too without a modulation. No. I'd say sparrow, sparrow. I don't think it would be white throated. Don't know what that is. Yeah. That's interesting. I would listen to that one in a long cut, but. Oh, it might be a Junko that's got some reflection blur on it. Mm, good call. We're finally getting a Savannah Sparrow, finally, that one. That one? Yeah. That okay. one, either a distant Junko. I, I think it might be a distant Junko. Yeah, I don't think it's, I think it's not high enough to be a puppy. Yeah. Okay, so we've now gone through. That's not a Savannah Sparrow. That's not a Savannah Sparrow. Cool. And we've done this entire night, which is amazing. Uh, let's go check on our classifiers. Oh, look, they're all done. Great. So let's go to classify. And we're going to go to Blanchard Park. We're going to set it to 2023-04-20. 2023-04-30. And then we're going to do this. We're not going to tag them at all. We're going to set classify. And that's now running them. Um, it's at least running one of them. I haven't tried selecting them all before. So is there any, so that the, I, I found the MPG classifiers didn't really work well on my birds and weren't identifying things close to accurately. I wouldn't, it, my instinct would be to only run the newest TensorFlow, the Benjamin's one, the bird box. I don't see a reason to run them in general. Um, I run them because they're there. I don't look at them very much. I run okay. them. Well, one reason I run them all is because there is a fire that's loud. Um, sometimes they pick up things that other things don't pick up, which is interesting. Um, I've seen that sometimes calls have especially with the thrushes, they'll have like yellow legs or something that just one, only one of them will have. So I generally check them all on a large night. That's not going to make any sense at all, but yeah, uh, I'm not sure you need to run them all. I guess uh, I need to check something though. Why is it only running on the MPG course classifier? Oh, because that's the only classifier. But it is running all the detectors. Cool. Okay, I guess it's doing these serially instead of at the same time because I selected them this way, mm. which is bad because that's slow. Um, so you're running one classifier on all five oh, detectors. That's, no, that's look, what I was not understanding. I thought you were no, running no, no, five. No, I'm, yeah, I'm running all five detectors on one classifier. Yeah, and honestly, if it was me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't run the MPG classifier at this point. Yeah, but it's pretty trivial. Like I already got all the twenty first and the twentieth. 
right? Now it's on the 22nd. So I'm not that worried about it. All right. In fact, if we go down to my calendar view, we can see, oh, look at this. Stuff's happening. So here it's cool. seep. Let's go look at seep. Noise, 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 possibly not a noise, 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 noise. Hey, it's a bird. Hooray. So I tend to do two passes, um, which is first one, which is noise. You know, uh, knock everything out. Second one is the fun stuff. So this is just me like looking through everything and being like, what Ooh, the? Oh, cool. Yeah, that's a really clear white throated sparrow. This one? Yeah. Beautiful. There's all kind of fun in there. Yeah, we got some warblers coming in here. Coming in hot. Noise. Ah, stop pressing M, Richard. Uh, cool warblers. And there's 206. What is that thing? Palm warbler. Palm? Yeah. That's power. A Beautiful. You got the power. I got the power. This is actually a beautiful night. What a good, uh, what a good luck. Look how beautiful that is. Like I magic. Think, everything is great. I mean, obviously it's a bit noisy, but I mean that isn't bad for noise. It's not bad. Um Vermont so is deep. Let's Vermont this deep. week. Let's check yeah. this rush. Ooh, cool. Cool. Bar. Human. <laughs> Possibly bird. I, I would think maybe junk. Yellow bellied zapsucker. Virginia rail, maybe? I'm not sure. Yeah. Jay? I have no clue. That's weird. Like blue jay. I got a blue jay the other night. I think those are blue jays. Oh my god, what time is it? 2 a.m.? Yeah. I had a blue jay the other night. Robin. Robin. Yeah. Robin. 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 3 a.m. Robin time. Yep. They see me, Robin. All right. Did we did we skip a hermit thrush back on the last page? Yeah, oh, I think I think Ian mentioned it. In yeah, the chat. I think I think I think we might have called called a hermit thrush a, a noise. Well, let's go through this again then with the uh, oh. with the actual classifier. Oh, the blue jay was a hermit thrush. It just sounds weird. It's oh, so close okay. to the mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that makes a lot of sense. What's this? Don't know. It might be noise. No, it's not regular enough. That is a sap sucker, isn't it? Yeah, that's awesome. That's a great one. We think rail? Yeah, I think Virginia rail. Oh, wow. That's weird tinny noise. It, it must be so close to the mic. All those wacky overtones on that hermit thrush. That's all hermit thrush? Yeah, I think I think Ian's right. I, I never would have guessed that. Could be noise. But it, it makes sense because from a distance, that, that hermit thrush at... at 215.18 it was uh um from a distance all that overtone would be lost and you would just have the main tone robin 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 okay robins okay so we have thrushes for this night um why don't we actually go through and just finish this night out um, so this was the 21st, right? Yeah, yeah. Good. So let's good go action. do that that horrible thing we didn't do before, which is all the seep calls. Um, if y'all don't mind spending some time with me, this might go over. No, I, I I'm 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 comfortable. Okay. Ready? Anybody can come and go as they need. What's this? Don't know. I don't know. It's so short. I'm I'm not even sure. This looks like an oven bird, but probably isn't. No, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't quite call it yet. White throat. Ah, shit. It's not what I wanted. Now they're all they're all unclassified. Yeah, it's because I was using the course preset and I wanted to use Eastern calls. Ah, uh, the so big X. Stop doing that. No, is this happening again? No. 
Oh, my, my wasn't muted. Yeah, my son's going to sleep, so I'm not sure if I can talk that much. That's okay. There's a bug that's hitting me right now. This is, this is awesome. This is absolutely awesome. Uh, the, I've never gotten a sap sucker before. Me neither. <laughs> I, I've, I've had one, and a couple of people have shared them on the group. I think you're right. I, I'd, I'd li like, love to listen to it a few more times, but I think, I think you're right. Okay, I fixed the bug by refreshing. This is a sad Savannah, chipping. Chipping? I think. I'm not sure. That could be a fox. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm not used to this view. Yeah, it's hard to tell. The second Savannah. one there and the fourth one. Don't know. Um, Don't know. Don't know. Uh, Yellow. I'd call the, I'd call the uh, Yellow Rump. middle one's got to be like Song Sparrow. Uh, Song Sparrow Swamps. Uh, Fox Sparrow. Yep. This one's Yellow Rump? I think so. I mean, it's not 100% sure, but it's short. It's rising. It's lower. It's everything that you'd want it to be, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what that is. Palm? Palm? Likely palm, yeah. White throat. White, White throat. throat. Don't know. Chipping, I think. That could be, uh, the one above that could be, uh, might be Junko. Yeah, but it's kind of soft. It's, it's, yeah, it's too hard for me to tell. Chipping? I think so. Sav. Chipping? Chipping. Junko. Yep. White throat, X, white X. throat. All right, this is great. Okay, this one. Mystery, probably white throat, but it's far away. Yeah, I'd, yep. call that a, I'd call that a sparrow. Black throat of blue? I'd call no. it a savannah, probably. Yeah, like, likely savannah, high and descending, short. Junko, yeah. Mystery. Uh, Jay. Uh, this is a buzzy one. Yeah, swamp, swamp lisp. Yeah. Okay. Uh, swamp sparrow is one. Sav, Sav, X, J, J. It's funny. This I'm not used to this. Like your Savannah sparrows are not as descending as my Zoom levels on my aud audacity. Mm. Yeah, this 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 clipping makes it convenient to zoom in real close, but then everything looks so wide to me. Yeah. Mm. Like I like the chipping sparrows don't look like chipping sparrows to me, but I'm I'm sure they are. It's just because yours is yours is so stretched. This is the same view to that mine. came default with Vesper, and it's the same view that Bill Evans used in his guide. So, so I set my audacity up. The view is set to mimic the old bird guide as much as possible. Cool. Okay. Like that middle one there looks more like a chipping to me there. Yeah, that's that's a standard chipping. The third one. What's is the that second a brown one? creeper? Is number two a brown creeper? I don't know what that is, to be honest. It could be swamp, I guess. I don't No, it's the, the modulation is way too slow for swamp. I would I've think. had trouble. I I have trouble with the brown creeper and golden crown kinglet. I'm not sure I can separate them. So my understanding is that brown creeper has um by the way, look at the diurnal ones. Yeah, on, on old bird guide because that's brown creeper has like four little call notes, but um, it could be Junko as well. Like sometimes, sometimes I do get Junkos giving. Oh the right, the call. Junko, but yeah, the the Junko. Um, that's a good that's a good point. Um, but I thought the Junko had a deeper modulation. Anyway, I, yeah. Once again, once again, like um, I'm just not used to this view. It's hard to that. That modulation looks pretty deep to me, but yeah. Again, I might, I might be misinterpreting the view as well. I'd call your one sixteen a chipping sparrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think those are all white throats. Yeah, yeah, but I can't, I can't like this one. I can't tell. You know? No, 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 no. And this, these, this might be white throat. These two. I think they're more sparrowy. Yeah. Sparrow -y. Uh, I don't know what these two are. Chippy, chippy at the end. Chippy. The last two are chippy. Yeah. Okay, yeah. This. Eastern C. Okay, that's easy. Uh, X, J, probably X actually. Heavily modulated, yeah. yeah. And probably that other one that looked like that was was 
the one that I thought was a brown creeper was a was a white throat all not, along I'm, anyway. I'm not sure I'd call yeah, I'm not sure I'd call that a white throat. Yeah, it's whatever it is, it's the same thing. <laughs> but uh, I don't know what it is. Northern water thrush. Oh no. I really hate this. So so aren't you aren't you able to set up one of your keystrokes as noise even when you're in the call classification? I did that. Wow. Wow, really? Yeah, I, I kept lowercase n as to classify as noise even in the eastern constraints. So I edited the eastern constraints to allow noise to be a. I'm because, of course, of course, I was I was looking forward to to doing my my course and my and my regular classification in the same pass but I didn't necessarily need to be complete with it. Um, <laughs> Yucatan. <laughs> hey man, live your life, dream your dreams. <laughs> okay, cool. Let's go back to where we were, let's refresh. Have I saved you a couple of minutes? Yes. <laughs> Teamwork makes a dream work. Oh. Chippy. Mystery. Nice songish thing, but who knows? Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't yeah. know what that is. Field. This one? The second no, the to last left. is field. Yeah. And then the last is yellow rump. Is that? OK. Yeah, the last one. Yellow room. Palm, palm. Yep. Cool. Two. I don't get many palms. I get a lot. I mean, not on this, but I get them migrating through Vermont. What is that thing? Who knows? Weird. That's pretty high, but I would assume it's a weird white throat. Yeah, but I'm not going to. I think. I yeah. Yeah. Palm. I'm not touching that. But that one you're on is palm, yeah. What a great night, man. Chippy. This was a beautiful night. Uh field? Uh no. Maybe yeah. white throat. Soft one. Chippy, chippy. Yellow rum. Oh, you get more yellow rum me too. This was a good night. Chippy. Okay, we're we're getting there. We're almost done. I'm having fun. Black and white warbler? No, no, no. Black and white should 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 look fuzzier. Um, that might be one of the weird palms, but I'm not sure. I would put it as warbler SP if it was me on that third one. I don't have a warbler. I mean, uh, it could be black and white. I'm just not used to this resolution again. Yeah, again. I see, I see what you're saying, but I would I would expect a little more um a little more fuzz. Well, I don't want to even really. This is fun and all, but I want to get to uploading this to show you how. Yeah, I do. yeah, I understand. Uh, oh, what's this? This, this is so this fun. is this is way more fun than anything. <laughs> cool. I mean, this, this, if you don't enjoy this, you won't enjoy the game. So. Yeah. Right. If you can't if you can't sit through this recording, you're gonna have trouble with uh, with analyzing a night when it going gets good. Probably in. <sighs> No, oh, that's a swamp. That's swamp. That last one. Yeah, that's swamp Lincolns. Yeah. Cool. I guess there's not too many Lincolns getting into Vermont yet. You know what? The, I think they're uh like I think they're fair game. Yeah. Like because I'm getting grasshopper sparrows and stuff. So I think Lincolns are fair game. Yellow rump? Maybe. I'm not sure. It's a it's a good question. That's the most oven bird like one I've seen yet, but I, yep. I wouldn't I wouldn't call it I'd... Savannah Savannah. Yeah, yeah. Definitely the last be, one. I'm not that could actually be something else. Huh? Yeah, yeah. The one okay. or four might be way through, yeah. So yeah, we've yeah, got right. that from from these two things. So that's cool. I want to go through now and let's look at the bird box real quick. 
uh, which didn't find anything or hasn't worked yet. So and, while you're uh, setting up here, I would want I want to run a birdnet pi, but I don't know what the birdnet um, detector detects. So I ran I had a pretty decent night last night, and I just installed birdnet and ran my birdnet through it. Um, and uh, I got to play around with the settings because I'm getting a lot of European species. But it was detecting all my spring peepers, which is kind of cool, and and identifying them. Oh, that's cool. But uh, I did check one. Like it, it, there was an American tree sparrow, and I didn't think I had one. And so I zoomed to it, and uh, I would have called it a chipping sparrow. So, but it got the call note. So, it's uh, it does get some call notes, and it has uh, it's got a bunch of white throats and savannas. I got to go try to check those out too. But. Uh, I was going to try that, and then I was going to try running it through um, BirdVox Detect once I get that installed, and compare them, compare them all, just out of curiosity. I don't know why this problem is happening. So we're not going to do that right now. That's okay. I'll fix that later. Let's export some stuff because that's where this gets different. So I'm going to export metadata to a CSV file. Uh, no. Clips. Clip counts, yeah. No, it is this one, metadata. OK, OK. We did the 21st. And we're going to use these two, classification, um, call star, call star, and we're going to use the MPG original, and we're just going to call this output. Uh, let's let's actually do better than that. Zero four twenty. See, and it's rush. So that's exporting right now. So it's doing that. Okay, it's done that. So we go back here. Um, and we have here now this file, which has all these different things using the old format, which is when I originally did it for. And this is kind of cool, right? It has like seep, 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 seep. But it also has, oh yeah, so next is seep, empty, 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 which I feel like shouldn't be empty. I feel like that's because it's call. Oh, no, that's because that's those are the thrush ones. Why are so many empty? You never did the thrush, did you? We did it before. That's how we found the sapsucker, right? That was, yeah. going, that was doing noise, I think. I don't think you actually classified the thrush. Oh, oh, right. Yeah, I think that was just, you were just, screening out noise at that point yeah i mean i've i've always wanted to do both steps in one shot um that always seemed smart to me because i, I we this we did this yeah we did them all okay yeah i i remembered oh okay you tagging them hmm. um the zoom thing is like in my way there we go you can do the drop down to hide all the zoom controls Hide floating panel. Oh, yeah. Cool. Okay, so now we have it. This is much better. So we got rid of all those empty ones. You can see sav, sparrows, white throated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And this is just yeah. all of them here, which is great. And they've all been exported, including the thrushes, which is excellent. So what do I do with that thing? Good question. Um, so I'm in here. Uh, whoop, SRC, birding, SRC, NFC, uh, best birdie eBird. I think that's where I did it. Yep, it looks like it. Um, move, well, let's copy just for good measure. Volume, Sabaya, Blanchard. Let's copy it here. Um, this is improperly named. 
So I'm going to change that real quick. Right. So now it's a CSV file. Now, this is the command I'm going to use, which is kind of weird. What is this thing that I'm doing here? That is a good question. Let's show you. So what this does is this is some code I wrote myself, which means it's bad. And what I do is I have this giant thing called create checklist, which has these various arguments you can use, right? Config, start, stop, date, station, export. And what I do is I go through um, and I make, I get the right dates given the, given the imports. I get the start given when you want it to start or when you want it to stop. I make an hour bucket because the NFC protocol on eBird demands that you only have nocturnal flight call checklists an hour long. So I make buckets for each date that we have. Basically, these are little like arrays just for each hour. I get the duration if you want. It's the same thing as before. And then I get the recording start. This is all just like extra weird stuff. And then I print all the results um, for later. But I also export all the results here. And this exported according to the eBird protocol. So it makes a special object and then puts it the right way. Um, and it goes through each bucket and just prints things out. And it does taxonomic things. It's, it's a bit heavy and you don't need to look at it now because it mainly works, which is great. But let's show how that's going to work here. So node, create checklist. Can you hide again, please? Thank you. Export CSV is not the one we have. We have renamed this. So let's rename this 2023-04. There we go. And we're going to export. And I have to set the day here. 21. Export. That's where it's going to be. And we're going to set it the start time. Um, oh, I had a thing for this. I don't bother with that part. <laughs> Anyone? Okay, that's not working. So I don't bother with that part of the eBird uh, protocol. I figure I split it up by an hour. They can figure out the astronomical twilight if they want to. Uh, astronomical twilight pro the nfc protocol only works between astronomical twilight and astronomical twilight um, yeah no I, I get i get it but it just i find it frustrating because they've asked me to split they, it by hour right and if they, they don't do want they do have a subtext where they're like it's okay to sometimes put some stuff in that's twilight but not astro twilight yeah i just i'll just go i just start it when it's dark and then i'll stop it when i wake up and what does dark mean uh like when the robin stops singing <laughs> i don't know like if, if i go out on the deck robin stops singing, singing in that, that nautical twilight they don't stop singing in astronomical twilight and they generally start around five minutes before astronomical oh before I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm sure i'm sure they do but like the fact that like if somebody was worried about that right they could query out you know like let's say astronomical twilight started at 8 30. they could just say okay dump the eight o'clock checklist they'll so start at nine Right, because yeah, it's already it bro it's already broken up by hour. And same thing with the morning. Like, let's say astronomical daytime, I guess, starts at like five fifty. Right, they can dot. They can just not analyze or not summarize the five to six o'clock time slot. That's the way I figured. I like we I broke it up by an hour. Um, I it just yeah I I, I don't uh, I understand. <laughs> I mean, you're doing the right thing. You're following the protocol, but I just. The protocol Sometimes. wasn't made to be smart. The protocol was made to be incredibly inane and, and weird. Uh, it's not a great protocol. It's a specialized protocol. Some of the specialized protocols are also very strange, like the Pelagic protocol, and they don't have very clear instructions for it. Um, I don't mind having hour long ones if it's in the middle of the night from 10 to 11. That's basically how my thing works, as you can see here. So zero, zero to one, this is one hour, right? That'll be one checklist. Um, the issue is if you do it, if you do it over, before the beginning of, of twilight or something, it doesn't say whether or not you heard a bird before astronomical twilight or after astronomical twilight, which is different for the thing. They basically don't have a granular enough experience. And so a lot of data might get thrown out. Um, my yeah, script, and a lot of birds yeah. are moving that time, I get it. But like, so I would, uh, like today I'm going yep. and then 
as soon as the chipping spare on the, I mean, the white throats start and they've been going all night, but you, it, like uh, Joe always says this in the, in the nocturnal, when they get fuzzy at the end and you can tell they're on the ground. Yep. And as soon as the ground ones start, I stop, I stop. That's I'll stop identifying. I call that the end of my file. Yeah. So like I could get something flying and it could, it's daylight outside. I'm still recording. I'm still putting it in eBird. Right. But as soon as the birds on the ground start going, like I'll have a few robins before that, that I just. Yeah. But after, just, nat- after astronomical twilight begins, you, sh- you should be using the stationary protocol, right? It's not NFC protocol anymore. So the recording can go whenever it's just when you're uploading it to eBird. No, I know. I get that. I get that. I'm not following the protocol. I'm just saying the protocol is like just. It's a bit broken. Yeah. Like I'm already making it very granular and you can already cut out. But, but, and from my standpoint, like I'm recording birds flying, birds can be flying, can be flying at nine o'clock in the morning. Now I'm not going to call. I'm not going to, I mean, I stop it when the identification just gets too. Yeah crazy right like i don't care i don't care if it's daytime or nighttime i'm still caught and that's the way i look at it that's fair i built my script to, to figure it out as much as i could i've written thousands and thousands of words on this now with another ebird reviewer um anyway here's here's how my thing works right so it takes i put in manually the start and stop times for when i want to do it this is exactly matching the um twilights so it'll just be nfc stuff and you can see here that I, you know, it prints it out for each bucket. So from nine until 10, I, 930 until 10, I only have one bucket because that's, it does it on the hour. So I only heard one bird then and we know exactly what it was. For the next hour, it was 10 o'clock. We saw two birds. One of them, we only could figure out Sparrow. Next hour, 11 to 12, it shows you exactly which birds you had. And it has this really cool thing where it'll cut out. Uh, let's do one that's more obvious, you know, here or something, right? What this says is we had seven birds, but it could have been more because there were nine calls. But some of the calls were within 15 seconds of another call. So I don't count that as a new bird. I only count birds which are 15 seconds isolated from another bird, which I think is enough time for them maybe to fly over. Um, I, I, w- I, would, I would say there's a lot of room for debate on that and that your, your 15 second cutoff, I would... If it, if it was if it was a one button change that I could make myself, I would probably move it to thirty seconds. I could do that, or maybe even a minute. Yeah, I don't so think I can, I, I can do that. I don't think fifteen seconds is that bad. But I have yeah. had a Swainson's thrush in July when they're very rare. Uh, yep. Call for three minutes. Yeah, <laughs> it started. Yeah. It, it was still going after three minutes. It's, it it's like, arbitrary. It's an arbitrary. Yeah, yeah. So it's yeah. just. A, but I think like but, fifteen seconds is not a bad number yep. i would guess but yeah and and i think i think that the the issue of density dependent calling makes all of our guesses complete complete just casual you know it's if anyone takes these counts too seriously they're not a serious analyst yeah um totally agree with that yeah like do they call in response to each other yeah right like do they call so, less when there's more of them like you know, like i mean i don't think that's the case but who knows right i've just logged into my personal um nfc account for ebird um you may have seen here yeah, i have the totals as well as the buckets so here's like the 3 a.m time here's the 4 a.m time buckets just a short number per hour and here's all the totals at the end just so i can see oh i saw oh, that's nice ebird. this is that's cool. nice but then what I also did was I exported all this to a file, which is here. And in fact, we can cap that file. And what we have is you can see it looks like eBird now. It's a different format entirely. That's what my script does. So doesn't Vesper do that? No. Oh, okay. It That's may cool. do it That's now. Cool. It didn't do it the way it, this, this was code I did all myself a while ago before it did it for eBird. I need to check if it mm-hmm. does it for eBird now. Within I world. do the exact same thing using R. And my yep. uh, my Audacity labels, um, so I take like you can export your labels in Audacity as a text file, and I do the exact same thing, it, like bucket it up and I total it over the night. Yep. It's frust- It's frustrating though because my night totals, like if I have a great horned owl, right? When I'm going yeah. through, I'll just put one label for it every hour, even though it's repeating, and then so my totals, I'll get like 
eight great horned owls when it's the same or same thing with a ruffed grouse, right? Like it's, it, it be going every hour or woodcock, right? And when my totals say I got like five of them, and it's like, no, it's just the same one. <laughs> yeah, I, I, for me, I, I tend to use counts for ones that I think are NFCs and I tend to use X for ones that I think are local. Oh, that's a good idea. Hmm. Well, then, See, I, 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 uh, I, um, so I do the same thing. I, I tally up my NFCs, but, uh, for something like Woodcock in, I have like a text file and I'll yep. never put the NFC in for Woodcock. I always put in local, like, so it's say one local rather than X local, but I could switch it to an X, I guess. So this is super cool. This is, yeah, this is there's something else I have here, which I want to show you, uh, quickly which is if you go here, there's like a settings file I have. Let me see if I can find that because I put it somewhere weird for some reason. Um, I can't remember where I put it. Uh, Vesper to eBird settings. So let's echo Vesper. Okay, there it is. Okay, so let's let's just cat this or vim it. So this is a file I have where I have all this text pre-written up. And the reason I pre-write it is because I wanted to like be able to put examples for exact things or like exact checklist even, right? So here's a, what, uh, Wilson's Warbler checklist. And what, what my script does is it goes through and it finds these things and puts them in automatically. Mm -hmm. So all these checklists were just made and they have this stuff right? Which tells nice. you where it was recorded and how. And then it also has notes about how we, I got to this point. So this one says detected using Vesper available at blank classified manually using Vesper more discussion available upon request. Meaning if you want to just let me know reviewer in this case, Zach. Oh, that's so much more thorough. Zero is able to identify the calls being very typical based on the known recordings. So which, which is all true, but the thing is it's still automatic and this did this for everyone. So like, this is a massive checklist that has all the information it just says the process. And if someone wanted to, they can follow up very easily to say, okay, can you show me the recording of the Virginia rail? In which case I would upload it. Um, and I think that's really cool. Um, I do too. Yeah. And it got to the point now where I have like 464 nocturnal checklists because if I'll do this just for just a few nights, it's great. Something else I can do. The reason why I have this, um, why I have this stop and start bit is because if I listen live, I didn't on this night, what I'll do is I'll have it stopped and start from when I started listening to when I stopped listening and I'll export that to a file and I'll load that into my actual eBird database because you can count stuff that you've listened live for your actual checklist. So I don't put that on my NFC account. I put it on my normal account. Um, and it has the same stuff, but it just means that I get to count it for like my local thing, which is really fun. So I'm I'm lazy. Like I just like my recorder, like uh my recorder is listed in my profile. It doesn't even go on the checklists. So yeah, I'm just, I'm just lazy. Uh, you're better than me. I well, like I, it. I like it. I think it's just because I I I spent a lot of time talking to this guy, Ian Worley, who's a reviewer for Addison County, about how to do this well. And a lot of time with Larry Clarfield, uh, working here in Vermont. And this script just makes all this stuff easy because I don't have to do it anymore. I didn't do it originally, but now like all the data is just there and I can still be incredibly lazy. This didn't take me any effort to upload it, right? And what I might do later actually is go through and I'll export some of the, some of the scripts off of Vesper, right? Mm. And then I'll upload them to Zeno Canto or INAT, but I got to do all that manually. Um, but My, uh, this is fast. Our eBird reviewers like oh, could give two shits about it. <laughs> they, uh, I think they think it's full of shit. To be honest, um, I don't know. Um, so they, uh, yeah, they just. Uh, it doesn't get approved. It just sits in there, which is fine with me. Like I was one of one of my buddies is one of the eBird reviewers, and he's like, "Do you want me to go in and approve all of this?" And I'm like, "Ah, oh, you probably shouldn't." Uh, but then he's like, um, "Then I'm like, can you just like leave it? Can you uh, unconfirm it?" But then what he said was, if he unconfirms it, all my 
tentative IDs, I can no longer query them. Um, like, so if I, if I guess, I think you would be able to query them, but other people would, you can query them, but they won't be in the database, which is probably accurate because they haven't been confirmed as being, no, accurate. no. He said, if he, once he flags them, then I can't even query them. That's what he told me. Well, we like tested, you actually, media, we actually, you can search your unconfirmed media. If you go in your checklist, yeah. you can click your checklist and you can also download other people's unconfirmed media off of eBird. Um, that's not a problem. You can do that. It's just no, but we t we tried. We what did what was it? We tried. Yeah, we I tried can help something. out if you like. Um, he shouldn't be able to review stuff unless he's also the reviewer for the same county or region where you are. Oh, he's a reviewer for the whole province. So. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm, sure he can, I, I'm an he can see, reviewer. He can, see, he can see anything in there. I'm sure. But what we did was we tried to flag something as incorrect. Yeah. Or, uh, and then I tried to go in to see if I could like through the media, find it. And I couldn't for some reason. I'm trying to remember exactly what he did. One second. Anyways. This is still being recorded, though. Um, oh. I want to ask uh, Joe or Angela or Ian, do you have any questions based on the process that I outlined today? I didn't get to Xenocanto. I didn't get to INAT. I didn't get to uploading media on eBird. But that's generally how I do it. Do you have any questions on it? Um, Go, Angela. Well, I'm a, I learned by doing more so than watching. And like I said, I'm brand new to this. I mean, the last time I coded anything, I was a high school student working off of my VIC-20 and Commodore 64 programming game. So this, uh, unfortunately, none of this has, has really meant anything to me. So maybe R Richard, like maybe once we stop recording, if you have a few minutes, maybe I could share my screen and you could show me how to, how to, to, to get my WAV file into uh, Vesper. Yeah, I could try with that. Yeah, sure. No problem. Cool. All right. Thanks. Yeah, and uh, and if if it's getting if it's getting late and you want to do that another day, because I was thinking the same thing is that you know I'm probably just gonna I'm just gonna go to naming my wave file properly, copying it into the recordings folder, pasting it there, hit import recording, and and start start the process. Um, and I I was thinking maybe to do that after saving and re-uploading the recording so that we could pause Richard. You know some things he did really fast and we could follow along with him so maybe we don't need to do that right now maybe it'd be easier to do it later in the week or something another thing i would recommend is vesper to ebird here um which is my this is my script i use um so you can download that if you want to use it if you want to take stuff from vesper to ebird um i was i was waiting to see if harold has it built in or not in the next version if he doesn't I'm going to be chasing after this and if he does then well he has something similar i've noticed which is kind of new um which i haven't really checked out which is like the new export of some sort but i don't think it's to ebird um we could we could try to integrate my code into it like or he could just rewrite it right um but we'll see yeah, I'd, I, be, I, I'd be I'd be super interested in that code if uh, if I plan to try to automate through the fall. And yeah, it's open the, source. Vesper right seems there. like the seems like the way to go, yeah. unless I fully automate it. I'd, I'd love to fully automate it, not do anything, but. <laughs> well, yeah, there's a way to automatically run this. I just don't know how to integrate with Vesper that well, um, but this this is as close as I can get, right? Um, and I want to be able to check the records anyway, because I think I just think that makes more sense than just uploading classified things. Otherwise, you're going to end up with too many false positives. So here's here's what I want to automate. And I, Ian's heard me say this, but what I want to automate is, OK, five o'clock in the morning or whenever Astro Dawn is or whatever, that the recording is imported automatically, that the that the the best the best longest to run model starts running um to to just pull the pull the thought to be calls and that it you know makes makes clips with a reasonably de decent buffer and saves them into a folder and then my computer once that's done running will just blast the speakers and it will be my alarm clock in my bedroom <laughs> and it will blast the speakers of every single clip that it thought was a bird and it will be noises and birds and it will just play and i'll be going about my morning routine listening to it 
And then if it's interesting, I'll sit down at the computer and I will go through and, and actually manually, you know, like we did, you know, mark calls and noise and blah, blah, blah. And it, if it's not interesting, I will go to work. Mm. That sounds so that's that's cool the part that I want to automate. I want to look at every call that's, yeah. that's real on good nights and whatnot, but I just want, I just want to hear the sounds of the night with all the dead space clipped out first thing in the morning. That's, that's the thing that I want most. Yeah, I just can't hear, so I don't think about that. I mean, I wouldn't mind hearing the shorebirds or the rails, but like the passer inside, I'm out. <laughs> so, Richard, you 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 have to you have to know if you if you lost high frequency sounds, you have to just shift the frequencies down and start playing them. You know, I have friends with high frequency hearing loss, and they said the first time that they that they listened to the sound shifted down, it was like a major brain change because like blue gray net catcher sounds like a blue jay and you know all this stuff <laughs> is like completely out of whack but yeah. once you learn what's what you can hear like if you yeah. can hear me talking you can hear every bird with with technology so don't i know i just need to get some of those i haven't gotten them yet so no but i mean that's that's a that's a package in python you know just as much as it is those things that they sell to older birders or whatever so. yeah, yeah, yeah. and i've thought about making yeah making an older bird thing myself um yeah i just need to do it i haven't done it yet yeah i, I would i would recommend don't don't give up on listening <laughs> um cool but yeah thanks for the presentation that was fantastic that's the dream i want to be you um and uh yeah this is this is really really super so how do you get your uh how do you get your um records in ebird you throw them in excel and then summarize them sort them or something you talking about me yeah yeah so um i guess i could i could share screen here one sec um but because i haven't been using vesper lately um i have been um manually going in audacity and so i have this google docs that's set up. It has my my station comments uh, here, and so as I go, I just I will just type in like the number one or one point two or whatever as I go, and I just add them up for each hour, and then I export. You know, after after I've gotten a, you know, if this was just a one, then later I'll just. I'll just delete that and put in NF one NFC one whatever. Um, so each time I finish an hour, I make it be in the proper format. But while I'm while I'm going through the hour and I have my 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 long audio file open, I'm just taking little notes here, like one, and then I'll change it to a two. I'll change it to a two point three if it was two calls or three calls from two birds or whatever. And then at the end of the hour, then I'm done. This is if it's a light hour. I have a different spreadsheet that i use if it's a heavy hour that i need help compiling you know 212 you nfc do, uh, 436 um you don't label your audacity and ex export it no 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 I, I i i did that a little bit and i just didn't like it um this works either. very well when it's light and there's not that much work to do um but anyway um yeah then here was here was my blue jay. I I inferred the blue jay is local, um, but you yeah, can't. Anyway, that. it was it was the the weedle call, um, but anyway, yeah. And then then when I'm done, I delete and I change the date, and you know if I was starting to analyze, and then I do. But each time I export, I just save it as a CSV. I find I find I. I have gone down other routes of of totaling totaling call counts and whatnot, and they I always forgot how to use them. They got glitchy, and I found it was more pain than it's worth. Because I, I, I go ahead. I love labeling them in Audacity. I love it. I just use yeah, a text I, file. I use a text file to do this. Like I just write when it's I say one ten heard heron or something. I don't I don't label, and I use Audition for for looking at stuff. Yeah, well, Joe saw this last year. I labeled them in Audacity yep. and then a file exactly kind of like the file you had 
from Vesper, right? Yep. And then I run it through very similar code, but it's our code. And then that splits it all up. And then, so when I'm going through the file in Audacity, I just, I'll put the banding code for the first time it calls. And every other time it calls, I just put a little one. Up. So that's how it knows not to add that to the total. It'll add that to the NFC total, but not the, not the, um, not the bird total. And that's, I just, Smart. that's, that's how it, that's how it does it. And it just cuts up the out. You know, I put the start time in the script when it starts and then it calculates and cuts all the hour chunks up. Cool. Um, it's, it's the exact same thing you have, but, uh, but it's using the label text file rather than the cool. Vesper text file. Yeah. And maybe, maybe I could adapt, adapt it to use the Vesper file. If I start using Vesper in the fall, um, or maybe I'll go with, <clears throat> maybe I'll try to connect with you and, and get, and get your, uh, um, your script. It's open source. It's available. Cool. So, right. um, Richard, is there anything that that you would like? You have your process. Is there is there what what's the next thing that you would want if? as a vision kind of thing is what's what's the next thing that you would like to work better or that would make things more helpful for you or whatever? I really want a better listing of what calls look like other calls and which calls are eliminated, eliminatable, uh, just straight out of the, you know, Swamp Sparrow and Lincoln Sparrow. Can't say, I just, I just want that because I don't like identifying birds that I don't know I, I could identify. I'd rather unidentify birds than I over-identify them. Um, so that's something that I would like to have automatically. So like a blocker that says you can't do that. Um, in my process, I would really like to automatically export exported audio into iNaturalist or um, Xenocanto. Uh, right now, that's an onerous task. Uh, eBird's also an onerous task to do that. But I would just yes. like to automatically just have those go up. Yes. Yep. I'm, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful that there's going to be something other than eBird, something other than Xenocanto that is for, you know, some research group that wants to do AI-based population bird monitoring and they want to have their database and that they become the home. If, if that doesn't happen, that becomes, you know, you know, a big data thing. You know, it would be cool if like, some some mega company like Google decided to sponsor it or whatever. But if that doesn't happen, then my second hope is that either Harold and or the Farnsworth group, they decide to host a network yep. of citizen science NFC stations yep. that are yep. partly automatically classified, that they take care of the back end, they take care of the analysis, the metadata, everything. And all we do is just contribute to them. And we say, goodbye, eBird, goodbye, iNaturalist, goodbye, Xenocanto. And that they will still have a public facing thing so that we can share a link to, hey, check out this cool night. Here's, here's what I got the other night or whatever, that we will still have a public access window, at least for things that we could you know, perhaps manually publish or whatever. Um, but anyway, I, I, I hope that there's a public facing side to it because of course there's, um, value in sharing, but anyway, that's that seems likely. I, I see. I see, I see. Ideally, Vesper and Birdnet Pi, right? So I see. I like Birdnet Pi will ID stuff on the fly, right? And you, you don't get to pick it. It IDs it, right? So and then it already can send it to a central server for bird weather, right? Like, I, um, but and and so I see it collecting, identifying it real time, sending it to a central server, and then you can go in and correct the IDs, right? But, and then so stored in the database will be the machine identified bird, your identification, it's all in one database. And uh, like, so like the, the, the functionality of Vesper where you can zoom and re-identify something kind of, but with that real time, identification so you can wake up in the morning and you know you can say wow like 100 100 white throat sparrow 500 white throat sparrows went over last night right i think that i think that's like that's kind of where it would be 
where it could go and should go. Yeah, I, I agree. If, 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 if the, if the, if we connect our microphones to a central server that either Harold or Benjamin manage and that they, they are running an equivalent website, here's, here's a station, this is mostly diurnal in Dundas, Ontario. You know, here's one that I'm looking at that's wrong. Uh, it's a Carolina Wren, but got classified as a Kentucky Warbler. Um, I don't know, you know, if, but here, let's just, let's just take daily charts or something or today's detections maybe. Um, <clears throat> hello. This is pretty, this is pretty clunky. Like it's not, I don't know, eBirds, I find eBird way better, but if you could click on these and then reassign them, if you wanted to, like it could be, yeah. and it like, like the database yeah. would say, would give the machine, the machine identified bird, the algorithm that was used to identify it, whether you reviewed it or not, yes or no, did you actually look to see if it was right? And then if you did, did you reassign it to something else? Like it was, a, that was all stored in some massive database. I think that'd be pretty cool. I, I wanna share one more thing um, I do or started doing this season, which is this. Uh, this is my spreadsheet where I'm listing what I've done. So I just did this for tonight. So record it for the entire night. Yes, recorded automatically. Yes, copied to my hard drive, analyzed, manually analyzed. Didn't we, we didn't manually analyze the file. I didn't listen live that night. I imported into Vesper, I classified, detected, I manually checked all classifiers. I ran Bird Box, MPG, Orbit Thrush. I exported. I didn't log any live listens on eBird because I wasn't listening live. I did log remote listens on eBird. So now I know I don't have to do that again. Um, and this is really useful for me because it just tells me where I left off and what I forgot about. Because this process takes a while and sometimes I forget but, certain um, things. For somebody like me who's new, would you be yep. willing to? would you be willing to share that i mean that would be a good you know i mean obviously it's you know it's a thing sure yeah. Yeah. yeah okay yeah this is not this is not rocket science this is just i realized that this process took a long time and i would like to have this be in a in a website to just show me what stage i'm at because yeah. using excel is kind of silly i'd rather have we all share this together and we could help each other out with their, each other's files that'd be great yeah and and do you know what i would really love richard yeah would would be to to pair this with the amount of time that each step takes. Yeah, and I have um, that here with time processing in hours. In yeah, general, as a way of like figuring this out. Like the first time it took me ages because I had to reinstall everything that season. But like, you know, this probably actually only took me like thirty minutes. I'm just gonna say X for now because it's a different time. But it it the reason I have the time processing in hours is because again I just want to cut down on time. Yeah, but I, I, I think for, for new people who are just getting their idea around, is this something that I want to do or not? And, you know, just just planning, just seeing seeing it broken down by steps. Um, obviously, the steps take different amount of time, depending on how many birds happen to go by. It's it's real quick to classify when there was like <laughs> one chipping sparrow. And yeah. it's it's a uh, well, manually it's a always take 20, 30 minutes. A thousand thrushes. Manually always takes time, right? Like there's always something that always takes time. So yeah. I shared it in the um, in the chat. I actually go to bed at nine because I'm going to Berlin Pond every day at 530. So I would like to go pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Um, I can answer some questions. I know, Angela, I said I'd be around to help out. Can I help out now or do you want to help out another night? I guess it depends on how quickly. I mean, it, it, it's your call. What do you need? Let's well, stop recording. I mean Okay. Stop recording. Uh...